Hello, YouTube world. I wanted to talk to you real quickly about the U.S. Open Golf Championship, which concluded today with John Rahm winning. And no surprise, he wins at six under par. Here you can see the final leaderboard. John Rahm winning, finishing at six under par. There, There's that number six again. And as we just talked about a few weeks ago, the last major championship, the PGA Championship, I did a video on this, Phil Mickelson won, also posting six under par as the winning score. What, what do you know? The last two majors, the PGA Championship, the U.S. Open, you've had the winner winning at six under par. And right around a month from now, we're going to have the British Open, the final and fourth major of the golf season, what do you want to want to guess or bet that the winning score in that British Open is going to be six under par, and you're going to have uh, six under par being the winning score in the final three majors of the year uh, for six six six. I I I'm going to guess there's a pretty good probability of that happening of having six under par being the winning score for the British Open and having that six under being the winning score in the PGA Championship, the U.S. Open, and the British Open. We shall see. Just rubbing, it, you're rubbing your face in it, showing you that we've entered this new world order, this beast system. So John Rahm wins at six under par. And um, wasn't it interesting... Uh, you know some of the things that were that that I heard during this tournament. Uh, you know, let's let's listen to the prediction of what the winning score would be. I asked you earlier in the day what kind of number you thought would be good as a winner or maybe a playoff. You still feeling in that five six under range? I'm feeling like five or six under still. I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. But boy, doesn't the U.S. Open separate the cream from the milk? And here we are. All the show ponies are on top. These are. I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. But boy, doesn't it? I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. But boy, I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. But boy. I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. But I don't see anybody getting better than than six under. So there you have Paul Azinger. Uh, there you have Paul Azinger telling us that he doesn't see anybody getting any better than six under. That he believes six under is going to be the winning score. And Paul Azinger, Dan Hicks, uh, both these men are are almost certainly Masons. And you know. Uh, how would he say that unless he already knew what the winning score would be? Isn't it unbelievable how often these guys uh, end up predicting the, the winning score? You know, a lot can happen in golf. I can tell you that from experience, from playing a lot of golf, that all kinds of things can happen, and it's not that easy to just throw a number out there and predict that winning score, but but uh, they do a lot of the time, and we're so supposed to believe it's just coincidence and that he knows the game that well to make that prediction. And, um, you know, this this was something else I heard uh, during this tournament. Another interesting comment. Well, David, this Richard Bland is 33 for 33 so far this week inside 10 feet. Flawless to this point. That's amazing. Did you hear that? 33 for 33 with putts, si putts inside of 10 feet. And the other man, David Faraday, says that's amazing. David, this Richard Bland is 33 for 33. So far, Richard Bland is 33 for 33. So Richard Bland is 33 for 33. Richard Bland is 33 for 33. So 33, uh, you know, where do we where do we see that 33? Yeah, uh, the, the most important number in masonry, and I don't want to use the full term, but masonry, put the word free in front of it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So the 33, as in one third of the angels fell from heaven, 33.3%. 33, mocking Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was 33 years old when he died on the cross. So 
Isn't it unbelievable how often uh, we hear the number six and number 33 in professional sports and seeing both those here at the U.S. Open. So John Rahm wins the U.S. Open at six under par. A few weeks ago, Phil Mickelson won the PGA Championship at six under par. And, uh, you know, we, we can imagine that the British Open here in a month, the winner's likely going to be six under par in that one for three sixes, the six, six, six. Uh, you know, what's interesting about this is I did a video on this, uh, I, I guess, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, you know, it was a big story in the golf world that John Rahm was uh, leading the Memorial Golf Tournament by six shots. There's your number six again. And on the 18th hole on Saturday, uh, they uh, gave him news that he had a positive uh, COV uh, test, and he was disqualified. So he was leading the tournament by six shots, and on the 18th hole, uh, and that's a 666 number, 18, 6 plus 6 plus 6, uh, they told him that he had tested positive for the COV, uh, the one niner, and uh, he was disqualified in that tournament. And it was really big news. And as I covered in that uh, video, he he was really shamed for that. Uh, he was really publicly shamed and uh, for not receiving the jab, the juice, the V. And, you know, all these articles were written about how he had made a, uh, whatever the amount of money was, a, a, a million dollar mistake. I'm, I'm forgetting what the prize money was. It, it was something like a million dollars saying that this was a $1 million mistake and a critical uh, financial and, and business mistake that he'd made by not receiving the jab. Uh, since then, he has received the jab. Isn't that interesting how now he, uh, you know, has redeemed himself apparently by receiving that jab that the programming to the people showing that if you just go ahead and take that jab, you're going to prosper financially, professionally like you never could have imagined. So looking at this article, it says John, R John Rahm wishes he had received the COV jab earlier after his Memorial Tournament fiasco. Let's go ahead and read it. Looking back on it now, just 10 days after he was forced to withdraw from the Memorial Tournament with a massive lead, six-shot lead, due to a positive COV test, John Rahm wishes he had gotten the jab much, much sooner. Rahm, speaking ahead of the U.S. Open this week at Torrey Pines, said he was partially jabbed when he was pulled off the Mur Mur off Murfield Village with a positive COV test. He was out of the 14-day window required after receiving his final dose. And here's Rom quoted saying, I guess I wish I would have done it earlier, but thinking on scheduling purposes and having the PGA and defending Memorial, I was just, to be honest, it wasn't in my mind. He said, I'm not going to lie. I was trying to just get ready for a golf tournament. If I had done it a few days, in, if I had done it in a few days earlier, probably we wouldn't be having these conversations right now. It is what it is. We move on. John Rahm had a six-shot lead when he tested positive. Well, there's that number six again. What what do you know? So, very much looking like there, you know, may be a ritual in play here. Here, do you think with? Uh, all these sixes and John Rahm now after the, after this public shaming and humiliation is now uh, wins the biggest golf tournament of the year, the U.S. Open, and is redeemed and is a hero. So uh, reading on, though, a positive COV test and a forced withdrawal is bad for anyone on the PJ Tour. It was especially bad for Rahm. Barring a meltdown or a tremendous comeback from someone else in the field, he was going to win. The number three ranked golfer in the world held a six shot lead after he walked off the course following the third round of the memorial and was set up was set to pick up his sixth tour win. I mean, there there's your six again. Unbelievable. You can't make this stuff up. Look at this. You see the six three times in this article. Six, six, 
six, six, six, six, three sixes, six, 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 three sixes. I mean, anyone out there, do you think this is a coincidence that, that I, you know, I've got an overactive imagination. You've got to be kidding me. So I, you know, so he, he was set to pick up his six tour win. And I didn't even know that now reading this, that means the U S open was his sixth tour win and he finished at six under. Okay. Read. And what do you know? We see six, six in the ad here. I mean, it just gets six, 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 six. It, it's just everywhere. Unbelievable. Even the ads, you get the double six, 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 six. Wow. And to add insult to injury, Rom lost out on the nearly 1.7 million tournament winning payday. So that was what they're saying is he made a $2 million mistake not receiving the jab. He learned about the positive test immediately after walking off the green too and was in tears the moment was broadcast live on television. And here we see Rom quoting, it could have been handled a little bit better, yeah, but it still doesn't change the fact of what really happened, Rom said at that moment, because it was the second time I got put on the spot in the same course while well, I was a little bit more hurt, but yeah, again, it's tough. They don't want me to go by and start shaking all the patrons' hands and high-fiving all that, so I understand that as well. Again, it happened. Luckily, everybody in my family and myself are okay. Luckily, I don't really have any symptoms, and with the, when what happened, this is the best-case scenario. Though the situation was incredibly tough, Rom has no hard feelings toward the tour. Well, of course he doesn't. You know, if you're going to continue going out there and playing and making millions of dollars and getting millions of dollars of endorsements, you can't be critical of your employer. You've got to play the game and bow down to the beast. So continuing Rom with what Rom said, to all the people criticizing the PGA Tour, they shouldn't, Rom said. Well, there you go. You know, we, we see John showing where he, his, John Rom showing where his allegiance lies, telling people they shouldn't criticize the PGA Tour. They need to just bow down uh, to the B system. We are in a pandemic, and even though this V has very different forms of attacking people, you never know what reaction you're going to get. So the PGA Tour did what they had to do. I've heard a lot of different theories. I should have played alone. I shouldn't have. That's nonsense. The rule are there, and it's clear. So we see John Rom bending over backwards and bowing down to the beast. Okay. You know, and, uh, you know, it's interesting, a, a couple of other storylines that we see with the number six being pounded down your throat even more. So Louis Oosthuizen uh, finishes second. This is his second runner-up finish in a row. He was second to the PGA to Mickelson. And we come to find that this is the sixth runner-up finish that Louis Oosthuizen has had in his career. As we read here, it was his second straight runner trailing by a shot. Oosthuizen drove into the canyon left on the 17th. I'm not going to read the rest of this. Just reading on, it was his second straight runner-up finish in a major and his sixth, there it is, sixth, sixth, and his sixth silver medal since he won the Open Championship in 2010 at St. Andrews. So, Louis Oosthuizen uh, gets his sixth runner-up finish in a major championship. There's your number six again. And one of the uh, the main stories this week, you know, Phil Mickelson, remember he just won his sixth major championship at six under par at the PJ championship. And wouldn't you know it that the U S open this week in his hometown of San Diego, he's been a runner up six times, six. There's that number again in, in this U S open championship. So there's your six, six, six. Phil Mickelson has won six majors he won the last one, the PJ Championship, at six under, and he's had six runner-up championships. You know, and, and 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 you see it here again in this article. You see the six three times: six, 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 three times: six, 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 six. six. The three sixes in this article again. 
So along the way, Mickelson has finished second a record six times without winning, leaving him the U.S. Open short of a career Grand Slam. He has won six majors, three Masters, two PGAs, and one British Open. Some of those U.S. Open defeats were tougher than others. Here's a list of his six runner-up finishes, ranked from the most excruciating to the most more tolerable. And so we have all six listed. You know, we see uh, one, and there's another six in 2006. Wouldn't you know, the number one, the most excruciating, was in 2006. There's your six. Then in this interesting, the second most painful, Piners number two, 1999. Flip that around, you've got 666. Flip that 999 around, you've got 666. There's another 666. Number three, Marion, 2013. Kind of interesting there, you've got the 13. Just all these occult Masonic numbers. Number four, uh, Shinnecock Hills. Number five, Beth Page Black, Beth Beth Page Black, two thousand nine. Number six, Beth Page Beth Page Black, two thousand two. So there you see uh, six, the number six, his six U.S. Open runner-up finishes, and they really rub in your face with this six and and how uh, contrived and manipulated these rituals are. And the sports world is so satanic. And, and just to give you another example, I want to show you, um, you know, I, I, sometimes I like to just check the news and turn on the TV to, to see how blatant and, and ridiculous the uh, programming and symbolism is. So I literally just turned on the, the TV set, and this is Sports Center, the, the start of the show. So let's just look at this and watch for the symbolism. By the way, I want to point out to you, um, if you weren't already aware, all these moving circles and flashing lights, that, that is witchcraft and mind control and brainwashing. That is designed to affect you on a subconscious level. All these moving circles and bright lights is witchcraft uh, intended to program and manipulate your subconscious mind. So there you go. Do you see that? Whoever this Soshi is, I, I don't follow baseball, haven't in years. I guess this is a baseball player, but look what he does with Soshi's show. Watch what he does with his hand. Oh, what do you know? He, he puts up the old sixer. He puts up the old sixer right there. There you go. Six, six, six. And, of course, more of the flashing lights and circles. Did you see that? Watch for this hand sign. See if I can pause on that. You probably saw the devil horns. Let me, uh, moving quick, let me get the, a pause on that. There we go. See that? The goat of Mendez, the devil horns. And, of course, a lot of people say, oh, he's just signaling two outs. Well, we're going to get to that in a moment. So we see the goat of Mendez, the devil horns. And then finally, last, we have the V for victory, uh, the broken cross mocking Jesus Christ. Of course, people say that's a, a peace sign, but we see this guy, and he's doing it with his left hand and pointing to it. The uh, V for Victory, the Broken Cross. So, literally right there in the opening to Sports Center, you see three occult Masonic hand signs back to back. You see the Sixer, the Devil Horns, and the Broken Cross V for Victory. There's the Sixer.
there's the devil horns, and there is the broken cross. And, you know, just, you know, just for fun, um, that same day, this is a couple days ago, I, I just got online and looked at what the head what the headline was on ESPN.com, and this is the photo uh, that they had, ranking MLB's Radical City Connect uniforms. And let's look, notice the hand sign that this player is making. I don't know who this player is, but we see there you go. He's got the go to Mendez, the devil horns up. Wouldn't you know it? I don't want to hear anybody tell me that this is for two outs because he's not on a baseball field. He's in a tunnel here, not even on the field. He's in some tunnel outside of the clubhouse uh, in the inner bowels of the stadium. He's not even playing, and he's got the, so this cannot mean two outs. He's he's inside the stadium by the clubhouse, not even on the field playing. And he's got the devil horns, the goat of Mendez, the devil horns up. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. And this is the front page of ESPN.com, the exact same. And what do you know? You see 6-6 six, six there. You know, 6-6 six, six, right above him. I didn't even notice that at first. We see the devil horns and 6-6 six, six above him. And this is the front page of ESPN.com the same day where I just saw that Sports Center clip with all the Masonic satanic hand signs. So it's unbelievable how much they rub this in the face. And the sad thing is for the people that deny this and call people like me crazy and think this is all foolish and there's nothing to this, that we're all just have overactive imaginations, your subconscious is receiving all this. The fact you don't notice it of your of your conscious mind, your subconscious picks up all this, the devil horns, the sick, the two sixes, all of it. Um, so what an unbelievably satanic world we live in. And so we see today, you know, John Rahm wins the U.S. Open. He finishes six under. And that is his sixth career PGA Tour victory. Fin finishes six under his sixth career PGA Tour victory. This is a couple weeks after he had the positive COV test where he was leading by six shots. And, of course, a couple weeks earlier, uh, Phil Mickelson won the PGA Championship at six under. So we've had two straight majors with a winning score with six under. And as I mentioned, what, what do you want to bet that uh, the winning score at the British Open in a month is going to be six under par, and you're going to have three straight uh, winners at six under par for majors, the last three majors, six, six, six. And, of course, uh, a couple other major storylines, Louis Oosthuizen, who finished second, that was his sixth runner-up uh, finish in the majors. Phil Mickelson, uh, who won his sixth major at six under par a couple weeks ago, his sixth major, has had six runner-up finishes in the U.S. Open. So that repeating six just all over the place. It is very sad and pathetic. You know, we live in a Truman Show, folks. We live in this false reality and these sports are not what they'd seem. They are not legitimate athletic competitions where the best man truly wins. These are rituals. You know, and sadly, a, a lot of these uh, athletes are likely from bloodline uh, families. You know, they, they likely have had families that have been involved in the occult for many generations. Uh, a lot of these guys, it's not like they just come out of nowhere. They're born into these stuff. And these sporting events are rituals. And, of course, we know the number of the beasts, according to Revelation chapter 13, is 666. Uh, we're living in the end times. And if you've not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I plead with you today, please don't wait one more minute, one more second. Ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins and to save your soul. And he most certainly will. He loves you so very much. So, I hope you found this video informative and enjoyed it, and uh, God bless you guys out there that are in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll talk to you real soon.